out from Via Grande on the foothills of Mount Etna. This is going to be one of our many stops in this episode of You, Me and Sicily, where we'll take you to a small mercato. I just love Via Grande. We're only 13 kilometers away from Mount Etna. As a result, the whole area just grows stuff that tastes so good you can't <laughs> believe it. And it's so fun because every two weeks there's a new vegetable or a new fruit. Right now it's watermelon. A few weeks ago it was cherries. I can't wait till what's next. Plus, I get to experiment today and eat something I've never eaten before. Wow! Wait till you see this. But first, off to Santa Venerina on the winding road up to Mount Etna and to the Russo family where I get to make Cornetto and Marzipan. Since 1880, the Russo family has been making sweets, pastries, and other dolce like gelato and granita according to recipes passed down for three generations. On the day we visited, the two sisters were there, Nivia and Anna. We are the third generation. Third generation. Great, here we go. I'm going to make something, I don't know what. Nivia is considered the artist in the family. She's been sitting in the same chair for 50 years, painting marzipans in all different shapes and colors, including fruits, vegetables, and even fish. Marzipan is a mix of ground almond and sugar. It's easily molded into different shapes, but time-consuming to make each piece separately, which is then hand-painted. Nivia says each piece could take between 20 to 45 minutes. Nivia here <laughs> has been doing this for 50 years. She sits here, she said, this takes 45 minutes to make. Look at the intricate work on this. It's absolutely fascinating to watch her take the time and make a piece of delicious art. Originally made by the Arabs, this tasty treat is very sweet, so just one piece is usually plenty. Next, we're going to make the Cornetto, one of the most popular breakfast pastries in Italy. Cornetto, or horn, is a close cousin to the French croissant. The origins of the croissant are questionable, but according to Alfred, the French brought the croissant to Italy and the Sicilians made it better by making a cornetto. First, Salvo stretches the dough and then cuts it into little triangles. I asked Salvo if I could try it. He said, of course, I'll even hire you. Why not? Pastry making in Sicily could be my new calling. Okay, okay, okay. Bene? Okay, here we go. I gotta stay straight line. Va bene? Benissimo. Ah, benissimo, see? The next part was a little harder, the rolling up of the dough to make the crescent shape. Oh. No. No, 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 Roll. So I have to keep rolling it. Oh, that's a pretty good one. First, we made plain cornetti, then with the fillings, chocolate. Look at this. <laughs> this is going to be delicious. Honey, marmalade, and many other flavors. And the chocolate to the use the Roll it, roll it, roll it. Chocolate. Okay. <laughs> no. Next, Salvo brushed the cornetti with egg yolks to make them shiny. Now we're going to take them and pop them into the oven for 20 minutes. Salvo makes about 250 cornetti a day, on Saturdays even more. They're a little bit different than the croissant. 
They're not as flaky, they're a little bit thicker and with a little flavor in there from Etna, the flavors of Etna, very right. unique here. Next, off to Achi San Antonio, and Alfred's favorite place to get wood-fired rotisserie chicken. Each cook has their own little twist on what they stuff the chicken with. Yes. Now, you, want get, you want to get the chicken breast like that or you want to get a whole chicken? What would you like to get? Here, they make it by stuffing the chicken with onion, peppers, olive, salt, and pepper. Juicy and delightful. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look Lung at it. that. Straight from the farm, not far away, to our table, yeah. less than a mile away. Of course, Alfred has to try a hot dog anywhere they sell them. A Sicilian a, hot dog. Well, it's called a Worcester. Of course, they're from Germania. Houston? Uh, no, Italian. Okay. Italian. <laughs> oh, okay. It's an Italian hot dog. Italian hot dog. Italian hot dog. I've really never had an Italian hot dog. I've had a German hot dog. We're going to see how this is, but it's, it's roasted. Delicious. It's like an obvi. Wow, it's good. I like it. My first Italian-made hot dog. Warm. Now off to the Marchetto. Let me just start by saying that there are large supermarkets in Sicily where you can buy just about everything for the house. But we prefer to support the local merchants. Most towns or villages have large open markets on the same day every week. <laughs> this is one of the smaller ones, but every Monday it attracts thousands of shoppers. Here you can find a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, including cherries, herbs, grapes, eggplants, peppers, peaches, apricots, garlic galore, lettuce, escarole, zucchini and zucchini blossoms, Etna's bounty on full display. There are also bags of lentils and beans, Ciao. olives, sun-dried tomatoes, and even fish, row after row of produce. There are also clothing items like dresses, underwear, bathing suits, and other knickknacks like jewelry, sunglasses, and stuff for the house. The prices here are significantly cheaper than in stores. Of course, all the food items come from less than a mile away, but not the clothing. Over the past few years, there are more imports from China and other Asian countries. Mai pomodoro, tutti i prodotti provenienti dalla Cina sono qua in Italia. Ormai la potenza è cinese. Ormai italiano giù. We asked our friend Giuseppe how much it would cost if it was made in Italy. He said at least three times as much. Endless stuff. There are literally thousands of items to go through, and if you need anything, this is the place to find it. Dress to wear around the house, not bad. Everything is three euro fifty. Uh, four uh, euro for this. This nice guy is helping us. It's worth it, what do you think? <laughs> Saluti dalla Sicilia. Uh -huh. While going to these open street markets is fun, especially to observe the sights and sounds, we like to go to a handful of smaller family-owned markets where we get to know the owners and the employees and know they will pick the very best pieces of fruits and vegetables for us. This one in Via Grande is one of our favorites. We showed you a short clip in the You, Me and Sicily episode featuring fall foods. In the spring and summer, the produce is far different, but always locally grown and made. This. A zucchini. Look how big they are. It's made right in Via Grande. It's aged here. The casing on the outside. Including the cheeses, fresh bread made with durum semolina, olives, freshly pressed olive oil, and wine. The wine and olive oil is especially delicious in Via Grande and is sold by filling empty plastic bottles. Questo è vino locale. Vino locale, bravo. Tutti a Etna? Sì. 
Tutto è cosa. Tutto è cosa. I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse of Sicily and we actually got to take you to some places not seen by regular people. And I got to eat a hot dog if you can imagine that. Was it one of your best? It was one of my best that I ever had today. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you check out others at www.evazmediagroup.com. Check us out on Facebook, You, Me, and Sicily. Thanks for watching and ciao! Ciao!